And speaking of sharing, I shared my story yesterday, but today we have a student speaker who will be sharing her story. And she is a wonderful young lady that I got to meet today. So it's my pleasure to introduce Kimberly to the stage and she'll be sharing her story. How's everybody doing? That's good. All right, so a lot of people. Okay. All right. I've been told on many occasions that the early college program was made for kids like me. My school has helped me achieve what I've been working for since day one. For me, day one wasn't so bad. It was some of the others that, bit, that were a bit rocky. I was born in Milford, Delaware in April of 1996. I lived there with my parents and two sisters until our sudden move down to North Carolina when I was four. Being young, I didn't recognize the reason for the move, but I now know that it didn't change much. My mom and dad would fight every day, and the angry words eventually turned to angry fists. He would beat my mom for the smallest infraction, broken bones if dinner wasn't done on time, and she still carries the scars in her hand from when he stabbed her for allowing me to draw little hearts on her palm. For my mom, that was the breaking point. Within a few days, we left our home and went straight to Seavan, the local battered women's shelter. We lived there for about six months while my mom went through court proceedings for custody. In the end, my dad was granted full custody, and we were taken back to Delaware. We lived in a motel room and lived off of Smuckers and Mountain Dew. My sisters were lucky enough that they were old enough for school, so they were given school lunches. I, however, along with my, I, however, along with my Smuckers, was granted a bag of chips when the hotel owner would see me standing outside. Eventually, the courts found about, out about our living conditions and told my dad that if he didn't have us in a home, that, he would be, that we would be given back to our mom. He moved us to live with his parents, who continued with the lack of food, but also added in beatings for me when I was unable to hold down the food that was served. Eventually, out of sheer luck, one of my aunts came to visit, and noticing our poor condition, she called our mom. My mom was granted full custody, and my father was given no rights of visitation. By the time my mom got us back, I was five years old and weighed slightly more than the average two-year-old. She worked as hard as she could to get a roof over our heads, but at the time, public housing was as good as it got. I don't know if any of you know, but public housing is about $15 a month, and you definitely get what you pay for. On our first night in our new home, my mom came running into the room just in, just in time to jump on top of us three girls before bullets started coming through the window, right above our head. According to our neighbor, it was our welcoming gift to the neighborhood, meaning they could have killed us, but they didn't, so we should be thankful. This is about the time that I met Sarah. She was my best friend. She gave me food when I needed it and would even give me a place to stay when it was too cold to stay at home because the heat was off. Sarah also managed to bring, into, bring me into a whole new world. Now that I look back, it was a world that a seventh grader should know nothing about. But with my mom having returned to school to get her GED, she was busy trying to make herself someone I could aspire to be. I was spending all my time with Sarah, getting, seat, getting us into loads of trouble. I practically had my own name on my own seat in the ISS room. Sarah would repeatedly get suspended and even arrested a few times before we even finished middle school. About halfway through my eighth grade year, Sarah brought me a flyer for Cabarrus Canapolis Early College. She looked me dead in the eye and told me that this is where a person like me belonged. She was right. I knew that this is where I should be and I started the process. I filled out the applications, attended the prospective student night, all the while convincing my mom this is where I was meant to be. By the time my interview came around, I was so nervous, nervous I thought I had blown the whole thing. But on April 20th, 2010, I received my acceptance letter. When I was first started at ECHS, I wasn't, I wasn't sure if I had made the right decision. I hated the school, the people, and the classes. I missed my friends. Just like middle school, I had my own little spot in the office. I stuck through it, though, with Mr. Fishback and the rest of the teachers telling me I could do it the whole time. About halfway through my sophomore year, I realized that all the people I'd hung out with in middle school and even the first year of high school were gone. Many had dropped out and some were even in jail. Sarah was in the hospital again for another overdose and I stayed with her every night. I know it may sound wrong, but I used her as an example. If I hadn't gone to early college, I would have still been, I would have still been with Sarah every day and it could have been me lying in that bed. I could have been the one to drop out of school the moment I turned 16 and think that a life full of parties was okay. She was on a fast track to nowhere, and I couldn't live like that. I got my act together and really focused on school. Seminars and study hall times helped keep me focused on what was going on in the world around me and how I could best muddle my way through it successfully. 
With my mom having gotten her GED and getting a better job, I was able to not worry as much. When the time came for me to get a job, I worked five days a week, but I knew that when I went home or was at school, I would be okay. School to me had become my second home, where my second family was always there for me. I was able to be challenged and still know that I had a wall of support behind me that wasn't going anywhere. Mr. Fishback, my teachers, my friends, my family, Sarah, and especially the early college program are the reason that I stand in front of you today, a high school graduate with an associate's degree all at 18. So thank you for me and every other kid like me. Thank you so much for being part of the early college family. And what now for my future? I received a full ride to Appalachian State University where I will start in the fall. And But not only me, what now for Sarah? Yesterday, I took a ride up to Rowan Cabarrus Community College and helped enroll her in the GED program that they offer so she can go back to school too. Thank you.